Please. Hey bosses, welcome to another episode of Boss Please. This is Jillian. I am here as always with Megan and Melinda. Hello ladies. What's up? Uh, so like we do every episode, I want to know how you're a boss this week. Tommy, Tommy. Megan. I always, when I think about how I'm a boss, I always just think about work and I'm like, what happened at work? But I always forget that there's so much that happens in between work. And this week, I believe I had like two self-tape auditions. Um and a a meeting so I had to fit all these within my work schedule so that's always very boss like and I always forget those happen often and Mm -hmm. I never talk about them so it's always like fitting you know the side hustle into the real hustle so that's how I was a boss I think that's like a total constant with what we do I mean Mm -hmm. all of us have such intense side hustles exactly and our full-time stuff and the side hustle is really the real hustle yeah the side (laughs) hustle is the real hustle (laughs) Always, always. Melinda. I just took me time. It's important to do oh, that. Yeah. I think it's you really deserve that. to do that. I like so that. mellow, mellow week this week. Heck like yes. That. What about you, girl? Um, I am a mentor for college students, and I can't remember if I talked about it here before, but if I didn't, I am. And I was able to connect one of my kids with a freelancer because he wanted to know about freelancing in the industry and journalism and things like that. And obviously I can't help him with that because I have a full-time gig. Um, But I was able to connect him with this amazing writer who's written beautiful profiles. She just did a profile on the singer Robin and it turned out so great. So he was really happy and he got all of his questions answered. So it made me feel really good that I could use my network to help other people. That's awesome. You're so giving, Jill. You do that all the time, not just with people you're mentoring but like with your friends and you you always connect and it's great I think it's really important to give back and I feel like you know people do such nice stuff for us Mm -hmm. all the time Mm -hmm. that you need to pay it forward uh so on today's episode um we actually have somebody on uh a little bit later that started this sort of like gymbery style mommy and me club Uh, she's not a parent yet um, but it did get me thinking about the reality of being a stay-at-home mom versus a working mom and obviously we don't have kids yet it's something that we've talked about it's something that we constantly think about Um, so I was just really curious about you know in your mind now how do you think you can balance it all and do we have any fears about it Um, I don't, I, it's funny to me because, you know, we're getting to the age now where we're talking about kids and I was even talking to Haley, a good friend of mine, um, last night and she was, you know, I hope she doesn't mind that I'm sharing this, but she said, you know, I'm not sure if I want them. Mm -hmm. I am so sure I want them. I, I was born to be a mom. Like when I (laughs) nanny, I nanny on the weekends. I love those kids, but I also know that I was born to do something great. I can't not just continue working the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So when I envision my life, I envision, I'm sure it it is a lot simpler in my mind than it's actually going to be in real life, (laughs) but I envision having a job where I'm my own boss, where I can create my own schedule so I can be there for my children as well as continue the hustle. And again, I know I'm making that sound very, very simple and it's not going to be once it actually happens, but I totally want to do 100% both. I want to be a full-time mom and like a full-time boss Mm -hmm. and I'm going to get it done, (laughs) but you know, it's, it's going to be complicated. I know. I think it's possible. I think that, uh, people tend to think that when you become a mom that you have to give up what you're doing. Um, and I don't think that that's true. I mean, I'm not a mom yet, but I, I definitely think I'll be one of those people that can handle both um because I already handle kind of a crazy schedule and a dog that's kind of like a child anyway <laughs> she's a child um, let's be honest she is. yes um but I do think it's certain personality types that can can handle it it, it probably isn't meant for everybody mm-hmm. but um yeah I think if you think you can do it you can mm-hmm. yeah awesome. I think I have I'm excited and I definitely want kids and that's definitely coming in the pipeline But I am nervous because I don't have my parents here to help me. And I know a lot of people that do have kids, you know, their parents play a large part in helping with childcare, being a presence, um, you know, and for me, they're really far and they have Mm -hmm. no plans to come here. Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly thinking about that. And I love California. I don't want to move. It's hard sometimes to see about raising a family here just because I feel like kids grow up faster in Mm -hmm. L.A. and I don't know if I want that. But uh, 
yeah, it, it's something to definitely think about before I plant roots. So that's a fear for sure that I'm not going to have my mom. There I can to help relate me. to that because when I was growing up, my grandmother was my babysitter. And so I always hoped for the same thing, but I don't know if my parents are ever going to make it out here. They're like you, Jill, they're on the East coast and we're out here and I am a babysitter slash nanny. So that's very popular out here, but I also no judgment to anyone that has a nanny yeah. or an au pair. But in New England and on the East Coast, it's kind of weird to have a nanny or an au pair. So it's like I can't see myself having one. Mm -hmm. Of course, if I had the money and the means, then yeah, maybe. I'm like, are you kidding? Like, I, uh, <laughs> like give me a night nurse. Like, I don't want to. Seamus and I were just talking about it. We're like, so like, yeah, we would definitely want to sleep. So if we have, you know, an extra however much money. Oh, I was talking about sleep training because um, there's this uh, former Bachelorette contestant that I follow on Instagram, Ali Fedotowski. Oh, love Ali. And yes. she has been sleep training her son, and she pays this company to basically come in and I guess stay over a couple of nights to yeah. sort of teach their son how to self-soothe and put himself to sleep mm -hmm. and it's been amazing her son has been like sleeping 11 to 12 hours and I was like okay Seamus like we're definitely doing amazing that. no the, we have the money let's do it the family I watched when um their youngest was born um I was the night nurse was there when I would get there oh in the morning God. yeah must be nice <laughs> Uh, so coming up next, we have Lacey Madden. She is the founder of the Pineapple Explorers Club, and we are so excited to chat with her. So we will be right back. Welcome back, bosses. We are so excited to welcome founder Lacey Madden of the Pineapple Explorers Club to our, our boss babe group. Love it. Yeah. Is that what um, we're calling it now? Yeah. Our, our bo boss, boss babe. babe. We're, I was trying to we're think bosses. Of, we're babes. I was trying to think of another B, but you know, we'll, we'll move on we'll from there. <laughs> uh, founder Lacey Madden grew up in Westchester County in New York and studied musical theater at Emerson College in Boston before graduating from the New York Film Academy with a degree in acting for film. Lacey's been a music teacher in Manhattan for seven years. She performed in numerous children's theater productions throughout the world. She launched the Pineapple Explorers Club three years ago to offer both parents and children a fun and educational environment in which to spend time together and play. So sweet. Um, it grew to over 35 classes a week throughout three boroughs of New York and a team of six teachers. She envisions the future with a three-tiered company that includes award-winning classes, book series, and television show. I love a vision. Welcome, Lacey. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Um, so small side tidbit. When we were at Emerson, Lacey and I were actually roommates. Oh, fun. Yeah. yeah. We were. In, in our wild <laughs> six-bedroom suite sharing six. Heck, yeah. Yes. Six girls sharing the, one toilet. In the LB? Oh, yeah. In oh, the in the LB. Yeah. <laughs> so crazy. And we had a very, like, pretty, pretty princess bathroom shower curtain that yes. I obviously brought. Yes, of course, <laughs> of course. Um, so I want to first talk about the idea of the Pineapple Explorers Club and where it was born. And for listeners, if you can just describe a little bit about what it is. Sure. Um, so at the time, uh, my husband now, but my boyfriend, we were living in LA. I was trying to be an actor. He ended up getting a job back in New York, and so six months later, we moved back. Um, while I was back in New York, I really wanted a job that wasn't just waiting tables or, you know, when I was in L.A., I was working at my my uncle's law firm. So I wanted a day job that really used my talents. So I ended up getting a job at Jim Marie of New York City. Now, mm -hmm. Jim Marie in New York owns about four locations, and they all work together. They're all owned by one person. Mm -hmm. So within a year, I was doing the music program there. I ended up being the lead teacher. I was teaching new teachers coming in. I was making lesson plans, and I kind of thought to myself, this is crazy. I'm being paid $17 an hour to do all of this work, and I can make it better. I, I kind of saw that there was a hole that parents really wanted something that was more for them as much as it was for their kids because they have to sit through a 45-minute class. Mm -hmm. So around that time, I was working also at Wine Riot with another sorority sister of ours, mm -hmm. and they kind of pushed me to start my own company. Um, it kind of came out of a brunch, a, a nice boozy brunch, and I oh, said, okay, love I'll it. do this. So, <laughs> um, and within like a couple of months, I 
got a lawyer and we signed the papers and they said, yep, this is your company. I started with $2,000 and an idea in my head and um, it grew very quickly. Um, I, I saw it first as more of a lifestyle business for myself, something that I can make money and really enjoy myself doing what I like to do, but also have time to sing in bands and still act and do all of that. Um, within three months, I alone was teaching 15 to 20 classes a week, and I wow. said, I can't do this myself. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you're the boss. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> so, um, so then I hired a couple of teachers, and the rest is history. Amazing. Where did your passion for teaching and children come from? Honestly, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> I always saw myself as a person that did not want to teach kids. When I was in college, um, there was a group that used to do kid shows that was like part of the musical theater, and I was so not interested in doing that. I, you know, when I moved out to L.A., people kept saying, oh, why don't you sing a kid's birthday party? And I was like, Ugh, I, like, don't want to be around kids. <laughs> that quickly changed. Um I found myself continually getting cast in these children's shows. So I was sort of like, what is happening? Why do people always want me to teach kids? And I sort of kind of let go of what I envisioned my life to be and sort of let the universe tell me what I'm good at. And I said, okay, let me, let me see what this is about. And I love it. I love going to work every day. I love the kids I work with. I love the parents. And it's just a happy place. Besides the people from Wine Riot, did you have any help starting the business from, from other people, like your network? Absolutely. I mean, I, I went to school for musical theater. I was owning a business, and I, I never took a business class. I didn't know what I was doing. So I really had a lot of help from Morgan. Morgan first. She is the co-founder of Wine Riot and now Rosie Mansion in New York City. And we had a couple of, you know, lunch meetings, and luckily my sister was someone who worked in HR for a really long time, so she still helps me with Excel sheets, because I haven't done those since high school. So I, I really had a lot of help. Um, my husband was super supportive and, you know, was always there telling me, you know, why don't you try this, why don't you try this, and, and we're really lucky that we are in an era that you can find everything on Google. <laughs> I mean, I have an app that helps me with my expenses. I, you know, all of our photos and social media, it's all scheduled out. Like, everything, I kind of just went online and, and Googled how to do it. I mean, I alone built our website and I mean, embedded wow. everything into it. And I've never built a website before. <laughs> but um, I think that sort of came from being an actor where it's like you are your own business and if you can't pay for it then you have to figure it out sure. yeah you talked a little bit about how your business grew so quickly in such a short amount of time and I imagine that gave you this high and this rush but were there any low moments when you were starting the business and even now have you felt any low moments or self-doubt throughout this absolutely I mean again this is something that I've never done before so I grew up, I forget to send emails, I forget to cancel classes, and people are upset, and, you know, managing teachers are, you know, this is the first time I'm I'm a boss, that mm -hmm. I, you know, this is my product, and I'm kind of giving my baby away to these people that I'm relying on. Um, I had to fire my first person <gasps> two wow. weeks ago. Wow. And it was hard. Um, I don't know if it's being a woman or just not being used to this, but I felt so bad that I went home and I cried. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> and, you know, and, and I know it's a necessary thing, but it's, you know, I'm, I'm still learning to be in control. Yeah, that's powerful. But I think we can all relate because we're human too, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and I, I get, um, imposter syndrome all the time. <laughs> and I, and I continually keep telling myself like it's working. So clearly there's a reason why you're here. 
what would you say your biggest victory has been so far? Obviously the business, but how would you define it? Um, I would say the money. Yes. <laughs> <Control>. Yes. yes. <laughs> like, let's not, you know, beat around the bush. Like I love making a lot of money. Yeah. And for someone that was a struggling actress for such a long time, this is great. I mean, I, at the end of the day, this is why I started the business and it's, we've doubled our profits every year. So, you know, I'm looking at this as, you know, this, this is a viable thing for me to continue and grow. And, you know, I am trying to be one of those 3% of women that make over a million dollars a year. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. I love that. It's okay to admit that passion alone doesn't pay bills. Yes. <laughs> So there are a lot of organizations like yours. I mean, you came from Gymboree. You decided you were going to make it better. So how do you stay competitive while remaining true to yourself and the original idea of the Pineapple Explorers Club? Absolutely. I mean, there, there are so many competing businesses, especially in New York City. I mean, I could name 20 off the top of my head. I think the difference is that, um, number one, we don't have overhead. We don't have a space. We're not paying rent. We do partnerships and we do Mm in-home. So I'm, at the end of the day, not paying $30,000 in rent a month um, like someone like Jim Bree or, you know, New York Kids Club. and, And, you know, these are big, big corporations, and I think people... I find are moving more towards mom and pop shops. They kind of want that curated, you know, they want to know who the founder is. They want to know, Oh, I'm teacher number three hired here. This isn't just a mill that my kids are going through. So I kind of find that people seek us out because we are a word of mouth business. Mm -hmm. Um, Every, you know, Anyone that's learning about us is generally learning from a friend or someone or they saw us at a birthday party or they came to a class so they know what they're getting. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really fun for the parents. I mean, I find that a lot of the classes in New York City either can be really stuffy where it's, you know, a a guy playing guitar and they're trying to teach these kids violin. And I'm like, they're two years old. (laughs) This isn't, you know... I don't, I don't really know what that is. Or it's like, you know, a very entertainment based class where mm-hmm. it's like their kids sitting there listening to someone perform at them. Um, so what we do is it's a super interactive class. We play all of our music on, you know, a Bluetooth speaker and our music is geared towards the parents. Mm-hmm. So we, you know, we have really fun lesson plans that the kids are always going to like. And they don't know mu- they don't really know music, so why not introduce them to Britney Spears? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, and you why, start why not make it a fun forty five minutes? Yes, I love so that. Good. I think anybody can agree that being an entrepreneur is extremely difficult. Um, so, what is something that you wish someone had told you before you started your own business? Oh, not take everything personally. I, I think it's really hard when, you know, we get the occasional negative review or, you know, someone is upset that our teacher was two minutes late or, or anything like that. I take it so personally because I find that this is me. The whole the whole business is me. I can't, you know, rely on anybody else. And I, I also didn't really understand the phrase it's lonely at the top. I kind of thought of it as, oh, because like you're, you know, you're at the top and everyone wants to be you. So like, they don't want to talk to you. And it's like, no, it's more that at the end of the day, my teachers can go home and not think about this, Mm -hmm. but I'm the only one that, you know, eats, sleeps, prays, you know, Mm -hmm. this business. And when push comes to shove and everyone's dizzy, it's me. Yeah. And me alone. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, You also perform in a band. 
Uh, is that how yes. you balance <laughs> your passion for performing as well? Absolutely. I, you know, sing and dance in front of kids, and then I get to go sing my face off at night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and wear crazy outfits and curse and do whatever I want to do. And I really think I'd go crazy if I didn't have that. I, I think it's really important to have that sort of balance, especially in performance, because, you know, the classes, they're, they're super fun, but I'm still singing for kids. Um, so to, to have a band that I, I really, that's like my passion project. We love that. You have to be able to balance it, you know? Absolutely. So earlier in the show, we had spoken about uh, being a working mom, and the three of us here, we aren't moms yet. I mean, you're around moms right. and dads all the time. Um, is being a parent something that you and your husband want? Uh, do you have any fears associated with it? I mean, you're you're around kids all the time, yeah. so you're seeing it. I, you know, I'm very, very fortunate that the business that I, you know, decided to go into is very female run Mm -hmm. um most of the people that own the companies are female founders you're dealing with moms every day so i find that it's a you know a much happier more uh how do i put it like everyone's kind of okay with you having kids and and i deal with you know a lot of nannies on the day-to-day most of my clients are working moms and I'm very lucky that the way that my business is run is conducive to having kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, my husband and I are kind of thinking about trying to start next year. And my teachers are like, cool, we'll take over your classes. You know, I can't imagine anyone being upset that I'm not teaching the classes because I'm pregnant or have a kid. You know, it's sort of, you know, you're not dealing with men. You're not dealing with people that kind of, you know, don't see you on a day-to-day basis. You know, all of these moms, all of my clients will be overjoyed that that's what I'm doing. And, you know, I could probably bring my kid to work. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Absolutely. You know, is is really amazing. So, you know, I I am very, very fortunate um, in, in the career that I chose. So awesome. Lacey, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I am just like so proud of you Aww, and what your life you. has become. And um, <laughs> it's just really I'm amazing. So it's so amazing to see a young woman thrive and start her own business. And we're, we're totally in awe. So thank you so much. And listeners, we will be back next week. Bye. 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 Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Boss Please Pod. And don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe on iTunes. Navigate the path to your best self with us, because bossing together is always better.